Welcome back to This is a Commander channel, where this is a Commander channel, and today I'm going to talk about Commander Tough Rules and Cool Interactions, episode 111. Today's episode is going to be yet another subscriber requested video. On last week's video covering that crazy Ashiok ability, Legion715 asked a really good question about something I've wanted to talk about on this series for a very long time. The question was, do you have a video about timing restrictions and abilities? For example, Urza Lord Artificer's ability, does it allow you to play the exiled cards ignoring timing or casting restrictions, such as casting a sorcery with Urza on an opponent's turn? And Moss Ward Bridge, why does this ability ignore timing restrictions? Now, I've wanted to cover this for a long, long time on this channel. It was one of the very first episode ideas that I had when I started this series, because I see it come up in so many games, and it's only going to become more common and more and more common going forward uh, as we keep seeing new variations of it. So let's take a look at the two cards that he mentioned in the question, and then let's take a look at some others. Urza, Lord Artificer, has an activated ability that says, shuffle your library, then exile the top card. Until end of turn, you may play that card without paying its mana cost. And then, Mosswort Bridge is a land that has Hideaway 4, which means that when this land enters the battlefield, look at the top four cards of your library, exile one face down, then put the rest on the bottom in a random order. And then the bridge also has an activated ability that says, you may play the exiled card without paying its mana cost if creatures you control have total power 10 or greater. So at a quick glance, these abilities look fairly similar, but there is a difference in their timing. And when players say their timing, what we're talking about is the times that you are allowed to play a card. Oftentimes it's referred to as like instant speed or sorcery speed, but this question goes a little deeper than that. So let's take a look at a couple other examples. Dothy Voidwalker has a replacement effect that says, if a card would be put into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere, exile it instead with a void counter on it. And then it also has an activated ability that says, choose an exiled card an opponent owns with a void counter on it. You may play it this turn without paying its mana cost. And then the last example, for now, is the recent powerhouse that is Itali Primal Conqueror, and I envy you if you don't know what this thing does, because uh, it says, when Itali Primal Conqueror enters the battlefield, each player exiles cards from the top of their library until they exile a non-land card. You may cast any number of spells from among the non-land cards exiled this way without paying their mana costs. So some of you may already know the difference between these cards in relation to the original question asked by Legion. And I'm not talking about the differences in triggered versus activated or how you happen to get the cards into exile, but in regards to that timing thing. When we read the ability on Urza and the Voidwalker, there's some extra words that they have that the others do not. Urza says, until end of turn, you may play that card. And then the Voidwalker says, you may play it this turn. These effects are granting you the ability or the access to playing these cards, but they are not changing the win aspect of these spells or cards. They do not let you break the timing on when you can play these cards. For effects like what we see on the Moss Warp Bridge and the Atali, we are actually playing these cards as part of the resolution of the original ability or effect that is letting you play them. The trick is to look for the time frame or a window of time given to you in order to play the cards. For both the Urza and the Voidwalker, they let you play the cards for the remainder of the turn that that ability resolved in. So if it is on your turn, an opponent is doing a lethal swing on you with creatures, and you activate Urza to try to dig for an answer to this attack. If you were to exile a sorcery board wipe like Wrath of God, then you sadly cannot cast that Wrath via his effect, as you're currently not acting in your own pre- or post-combat main phase with an empty stack, which those are the requirements for casting a sorcery. But if you were to flicker your Atali on an opponent's turn and you exile a Wrath of God, then you are able to cheat the sorcery speed restriction and cast it via the resolution 
of Atali's ability. One other thing to note, if you were to exile a land from these kinds of abilities, like on Urza or the Voidwalker, they do state you can play the card rather than cast, which means you could get lands via the abilities, but you are again still restricted by the typical rules around lands. It must not only be on your main phase, but if you've already played your one land drop per turn, then these abilities do not grant you the permission to play an additional land for your turn. So let's take a look at some other cards that do give you a window of opportunity to play the cards. Gaunti, Lord of Luxury, says, When he enters the battlefield, look at the top four cards of target opponent's library, exile one of them face down, then put the rest on the bottom of that library in a random order. You may cast that card for as long as it remains in exile, and mana of any type can be spent to cast it. So his window is that any turn, the one you're on when the ability resolves, or any turn afterwards, you can always cast that card. And because of that window of when you can cast it, then you cannot break the timing rules. And then a card like Light Up the Stage says, Exile the top two cards of your library. Until the end of your next turn, you may play those cards. So unlike Urza and the Voidwalker that only gave you till the end of the current turn, this sorcery lets you play the cards until the end of your next turn. If this were to resolve on your current turn, then you basically have two of your turns to play them, the current one and then the till the end of your next one. But if you were to resolve this sorcery on an opponent's turn, then you'd kind of only have your very next turn to be able to play the cards. And of course, you would have to follow timing rules. So yeah, that's the key to these. If they give you a time frame or a window of opportunity of when or for how long you can cast or play those cards, then they are limited to timing rules. But if no window is given, then they're being played as part of the current ability resolving, and they can break timing rules, but not land drop rules. Anyhow, that's all I've got for today's episode. As always, I hope that all of you found this video to be entertaining at least, and I hope that a few of you have even learned something about the crazy rules in this great game of magic. Have a good one. Ta-ta!